Hey guys, Kelsey Gold Merchants here with Plain and Simple Decor. And if you're watching this video, that means that you have probably recently purchased a Plain and Simple at home. First of all, we do want to say thank you so much for supporting our business. Every purchase really does mean the world to us, so thank you. Secondly, we want to say that after you have done your Plain and Simple at home, we would love to see pictures. If you're a part of a group, we would love to see the pictures individually. We'd love to see the pictures together, you doing them, anything. We love pictures. And if you don't mind us posting them on our page, we would greatly appreciate that as well. A lot of these designs, these Plain and Simples at home, we haven't ever done ourselves. So we love to see the colors that you use. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So what this is, is this is a video that will pretty much show you how we go through our step-by-step -step process for you guys to do your plain and simples at home. Now I will go ahead and tell you that this is a different process than what we use personally in our shop. Um, but this, this process works amazing and it's easier for you guys. The reason we do use a different process in when we make our signs when you order a sign directly from us is because our process takes quite a few days it takes at least three days for us to complete whereas this you don't want it to take three days you want to do it right away and have it done right away so we came up with a simpler solution for you guys to be able to make your signs and they look fantastic so here we go first off when you get your plain and simple at home you are going to have a couple of things in every plain and simple at home you have of course your sign it may have a frame on it, it may not. Um, it depends what sign you chose. And it will have your the stencil. The one I'm doing today says whistle while you work. It's our Disney one, um, Snow White. This one is super, super popular right now. We sell these like hotcakes and it's so cute. So I understand why. Um, but you'll have your, your wood sign, your stencil. You'll have three brushes because what we do is we offer two paint colors with your set and um, one thing of Mod Podge. Our Mod Podge is gonna be in a cup and then I'm gonna use red today, I'm gonna use white, and then I'm gonna use black. Yours will come in little bitty cups with lids, so obviously I'm not gonna send you a whole big old thing of paint, but um, so you will have two paint colors. If you would like more paint colors than just two, let us know. There will be a little bit of an upcharge, but not much. So anyways, three paint brushes, one for Mod Podge, one for one of your colors, and one for your other color. And then you're gonna have a thing of um, sandpaper. And if you do ever have questions while you're doing it or before, feel free to message us. There's also on this page going to be um, instructions. If you don't wanna watch the video, you can just read the step-by-step -step instructions. That's fine too. If you have a frame on your sign, you are going to want to start with your frame first. If you don't, then just skip this step altogether. So I'm gonna make mine a black frame. I like black. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either paint it completely black and have it painted black, or you can do what we call like a paint wash. And that's where you take it and um, you just kind of, you paint it, but then after you paint it, you're gonna wipe it off. And this kind of makes it like look like that stain um, kind of look because um, unfortunately we do not ship stains sorry guys because just of shipping and everything it's just it's crazy if it spills it would not be good so what i'm doing is i'm doing the kind of like um wash lift i don't know if you can see that but you can see the grain through it so i'm just painting and then wiping it completely off and not completely off i guess it'll still be there So once you do the front, you're going to do the sides because of course on your sign, even if you hang it or set it, whatever, you're gonna want the sides painted, I'm sure. You don't want them just that brown color. And this is where your hands may get messy. I mean, we're painting. Okay, so I've done the sides. Now, I haven't done the inside right here, and we do want to do the inside of that frame because you don't want it to be left um, with the color you're going to paint the background. So, what a lot of people do is they actually, you can tape your frame and leave tape at the bottom. Like, let me show you. You can tape it. Tape, tape. We do not provide tape, so you would have to tape this yourself if you're going to do it. Um, 
we take it and you can go along the whole frame okay and then that way you can just go along and just paint right on through so i'm actually going to go ahead and tape this off and you can do this before if you want um before you start painting your frame or you can do it like this uh with the paint because we're not using stain because we're using paint on the frame it dries rather quickly and i do want to let you know that if you do um end up getting it on the bottom of the frame uh on the bottom of your what we call it the slab on the background of your sign it's okay because you're going to paint right on over it with another color but i would say if you are going to use a white paint um and you're using black as your your frame you want to try to be as careful as possible just because that black you'll have to use a lot of coats of white to cover that black so we're just going to do this okay so i have finished wrapping the whole inside with tape and then i'm going to go ahead and do that inside ledge that's what i'm going to call it of the frame okay and then again i'm doing the white wash so or the black paint wash so that it can have more of a stained look so i'm going to wipe that down okay then what you're going to want to do you can pull your your tape up immediately afterwards um or you can let it dry it's whatever and then you're going to let it dry because the um just for a little bit a lot of people you can also use a blow dryer if you want to make things quicker if for some reason your paint isn't drying if you're not doing like the paint wash um then it will take longer to dry so you can either go do something else while you wait wait for it to dry or like i said you can grab a blow dryer blow dry it real quick and it's dry okay so now i'm gonna i've got the the frame all done pretty cute cute okay we're gonna move to the inside the background what we call the slab so this is the same thing you can do you can um i'm gonna use a white background you can either just take your brush and be very careful on the sides or you can go ahead and tape it again whatever your preference is i'm gonna go ahead and tape mine again and this time instead of taping it on the slab part you are going to tape it on the frame and this is why this is what makes you want to make it dry you want to make sure it's dry or your tape will not stick mine's kind of having a little trouble because i just finished and you know that tells me it's not completely dry to show you what i'm doing because that may not have uh, clarified it for you i am going on the inside now and you see how i'm getting it on that little ledge and i'm taking it um that's what you want to do you want to just do it all the way around all right there we go got it all taped off okay so like i said i'm going to do a background of white and you're just going to go at it now again this is completely preference you can decide if you want more of a rustic background you can decide if you want a completely clean background um a lot of people like the rustic -y look that's what i'm gonna go with today because this sign that i'm doing is actually a rustic -y look so you don't have to be completely perfect with your brush strokes um because we're gonna end up roughing it up we're gonna rough it up before and then after we add wording okay so there's my first coat of white um even though i'm going to do it rustic i can still see a little bit of the um the uh natural wood under there so i'm going to end up painting it a second coat even though i am roughing it up if you want completely clean you may have to have three coats it really just depends on your preference again this is your sign your creativity is supposed to be coming out so yeah so I'm gonna go get a blow dryer real quick and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got my blow dryer. And the first coat only has to really be dry to the touch um, because you're just gonna paint right over it. If you, you do want it completely dry though, before you put the stencil on, like completely dry. 
because then you may end up pulling some paint off, which if you are distressing it, that won't really matter. Okay, so it looks like mine's only gonna need two coats. Because, like I said, I am going to distress it, but um, after you do this, you can either blow dry it immediately or you can go ahead and pull up. It's really your preference. Um, I just get impatient and I want to see it, so I pull it up. But I would be careful because um, you could get white or your background on the frame, which I did do a little bit there, and that's fine. Because guess what? It's paint, so you can always just paint right back over it. Okay, now I am going to show you mine because, okay, so I don't know if you can see that in there, there are a little bit of spots that are still that natural color, and that's just because my tape. So you can go back in with your brush. Um, again, if you have a small brush, I would probably use your small brush. Um, if not, it's not a big deal. You can just keep touching up. Uh, your frame color and your color on your background as much as needed. You know, just get it however you want it. Okay, so now it's completely dry. So what you can do is you can either sand it a little bit first and then put your stencil on. I said previously that I was gonna sand my background first and then put my stencil on and then sand it again but I changed my mind. I think I'm actually going to just put this directly on. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna peel off our stencil. There is a clear, um, a clear piece on top, and then there is this um, like gradient grid piece on the back, and what we wanna do is we wanna pull this grid piece off, okay? And um, you can use tweezers, you can use your fingers if you want, um, we have these special little picks that we use and um, they're from Cricut, whatever, you know, it's whatever. We've used tweezers before just to kind of help pick it up. Okay, and I will tell you, I'm going to move this so you can kind of see. It is, if you've never peeled the backing off of a stencil before, it can be a little difficult and it can be frustrating, okay? The first couple times that I did it, I was getting really frustrated, but it's okay. You may be even a lot slower than me, and that's fine because, again, this is my job. I do this every single day, so I can do it a whole lot quicker. It also depends, you know, on your stencil, how many words you have, and whatnot. Because, obviously, the more words and letters you have, the more difficult it's going to be. Okay. Okay. Took it off. This is now trash. Okay. And you can see it's clear through there. All right. And we're going to put the, the part that you just pulled up, the sticky part, is going to go right down on your sign. And then we're going to end up peeling up that plastic piece on top. Because uh, that plastic piece on top is called transfer paper. So it just transfers it. Okay, so then you're just going to kind of eyeball it. Or if you're one of those that like to completely, you know, make sure you can measure it. Um, sometimes you do have to be careful, though, because it could stick and it stays stuck. So just do um, your best. Okay, all right, once you get it, you're gonna press it down. You can press it down with a credit card. Um, you can, if you have fake nails, you can press it down with that. You can press it down with the back of the scissors. Um, we usually use um, a credit card, but it's way over there and I'm too lazy to get it, so we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use the back of my scissors. I've done a ton of stuff before. As long as it gets pressed down fine, you're fine. Okay, so you can see it's like this. My um, transfer paper is still on top. So you're going to take it and you're going to peel it off. I'm not sure if you can see that. You can see me kind of grabbing it. Now you do want to be careful and make sure that it's pressed down because some pieces can come up like the inside of your E's, your L's, if you have cursive, um, stuff like that. They can come up if you're not careful. Okay, and that's trash now too. And then you just kind of want to double check, make sure that it's all pressed down. Because if you do have bubbles, there is a chance of the paint getting under it, which won't make it um, your letters as crisp. So there it is. Okay. It's on. Super cute. I'm super excited. All right. So now we're going to move on. This is where you need your Mod Podge. So this is going to be different than your painted background. Okay. Um, this from here on out 
on your stencil, you are going to dab. Um, you're just gonna dab, okay? You're gonna take a really light layer, okay? Really light, and you're gonna dab it. And you're just gonna kinda dab it and spread it. On your first coat of Mod Podge, you'll be able to see it, but you don't want it to be completely white. Okay, so you see this? You see how you can see my white right here, my Mod Podge? You don't want it like that. You want it clear. Because the problem is, is if you do too much Mod Podge, it will end up pulling up your whole stencil, like all the lettering. Once you pull your stencil up, all the lettering will come up because you just had too thick of coats. And that will do the same thing with paint too. So you wanna make sure you're using thin, thin layers and you're dabbing. Um, you can, if you don't wanna dab, you don't have to, I guess. Um, but I do want you to know that you do run the risk of your stencil um, bleeding through. So your paint not being um, as crisp on your lines and yeah, so I do recommend the dabbing. I know it's tedious. I know it sucks, but It does make your sign turn out way way better Just trust me on that. Okay Also we while this stuff dries we are not I repeat we are not using a blow dryer when the stencil is on okay and um, this is because if you blow dry the stencil, it will actually get stuck to your, your sign and it will pull up the paint, it will pull up everything and your sign will pretty much be ruined. Um, and that is why you don't obviously use a blow dryer. So we're done with the blow dryer from here on out. Okay, um, and this is where it can take a little bit longer but this is also why you use little coats because then it will just dry quicker. So you can do whatever. If you're having a party, you can go get snacks, you can go get your drink, you can talk, you can help each other out, whatever. And everyone's gonna go at different speeds. That's what's so cool about having your own sign because everyone does go at a different speed. So don't worry if you're slower than everyone else. Don't worry if you're way ahead or way behind, you know, it's fine. So we're gonna let this dry and we'll be back. Okay, the first set of Mod Podge is dry to the touch. So once it is dry to the touch, you can go ahead and do your second coat. Again, light layers, and you're gonna have to dab again. I know it sucks, I know it's tedious, but again, you need to do it. Just listen to me. There's been tons of people who don't listen to me on their make and takes, or when I actually can make it to parties. And um, their sign gets ruined. Okay, and here's the deal. I don't do returns. I won't take it home and fix it. I just won't because you you didn't listen. So I'm sorry. All right. So again, we dab lightly. And you do not blow dry it. I cannot say that enough. Do not blow dry it. It will literally get your stencil stuck to it. The second coat of Mod Podge is on. So we're gonna let this dry again. Okay, here we go. So now on to, after you do two thin layers of Mod Podge, you are going to go to your coloring, okay? So I'm actually going to use black on all of mine, except for the, her little bitty headband. I don't know if you can see that. Her little bitty headbands, I'm gonna paint red um, because I think that'd be cool. So, okay, same thing with Oh, I just got this all kinds of messy. Same thing with the Mod Podge. You're going to use light coats and you're gonna dab. Just dab it. With the black, you can, you usually only have to have two coats. Um, we may actually only have to have one because we're going to be sanding it. I'm gonna kind of wait to, for it to dry and see. Um, again, it's one of those things where you just got to kind of play it by ear, see how it turns out, see how you want it. Um, I mean, if you're worried that your letters may be too light, then I would definitely do another coat um, because that's, you'd rather be safe than sorry because it, you can always sand it down if you want to, you know. So we're going through... Doing some light coats. And 
And those that do this with bigger signs and more fellers, I am so sorry. You understand what I'll be going through, what I go through on a daily basis because switching colors and doing this and all this is tedious work, but you end up with a really cute sign. Okay, so my little red headband is, I'm gonna use again a small little bitty brush. And since I'm using a small brush, I am just gonna end up can't dab with this small brush but it's such a small space anyways it should be fine but I'm gonna do a light coat there cute so this is what my uh, dabbing looks like you want to cover all the words and then you do want this to dry completely so we're back at this whole drying thing um, I don't know if I recommend doing this when you have paint on it but I mean, I guess as long as it doesn't, I don't know, fly off, I guess. You're good. Which it shouldn't because you shouldn't have used that much paint. It's dry. Well, okay. So I am only going to need one coat on mine because like I said, I'm going to rough up the words and it turned out really well to where I'm not going to need to coat. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and start peeling up my stencil. Now, if you do have to use more coats, that's fine. Use as many as you want. Actually, I take that back. Don't use as many as you want. Use max of three, okay? Because if you use more than three, it will get too chunky and it's going to probably peel your lettering up when you pull up the stencil. So this is where you may need your tweezers again. You're just going to peel up the side and we are going to start taking our stencil off. The fun part is getting these little bitty pieces. This is where the tweezers may come in handy because like the the letters of like the E, um, the O's, all that, H's, they can be hard to peel up. So this is where tweezers or something um, that's small that can go under the stencil comes in handy. Look at there, oh my gosh, adorable. I don't know, okay, so my red, I did peel it up and I probably should have put another coat of my red. So I'm actually, cause it's not as bright as I want it. So I'm actually gonna take my little brush again and I'm going to just go in and brighten up my red. All right, I touched up the red and look, now it's done. So cute, I love it. And actually, because I didn't put two coats of black on it, um, I love how it turned out. I don't think that I need to sand it because it kind of left some, um, since I only did one coat, it left some little white spots so that you can see the white background through and so it already looks like it's roughed up. Adorable, I love it. And then last but not least, after your stuff is dry, um, we also include hangers for the back. So you can just take your hammer and nail and your, um, your little ha sawtooth hanger and put it on the back and then you are good to go. That's it, easy peasy, really so easy. As long as you just follow my directions, your sign will turn out wonderful. Again, send me pictures as soon as you're done or send me pictures of you guys doing them. I'd love to see all of them. And yeah, thank you again for your purchase and I hope this video helped you all out a lot. See you later.